If you ask somebody who doesn't know anything about sports to name a pro athlete, their answer would probably be something like Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Wayne Gretzky, you get the point. All of those guys were at the top of their sport and left a legacy that was beyond their sport. They start and end every conversation about their sports goats. When you look at baseball, there's a lot of dudes who are in that pool, but very few of them are more qualified than Babe Ruth. Based on what you probably think of when you think of Babe Ruth, it's pretty crazy to think that he began his career as a pitcher, and a really good one. In his first full season as a 20-year-old pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, the Bambino put up pretty good numbers. He even put up the second best hits per nine in the AL, and the Red Sox won the World Series, although Ruth wasn't able to play because he was out with an injury. If the Cy Young Award had been around in the early 1900s, 1916 would have been Babe Ruth's Cy Young year. When you look at the AL leaderboards from that year, you can probably see why. He dominated pretty much every major stat, and these weren't the only leaderboards he was near the top of. For the old school voters, who pretty much everyone in 1916 would have been, his win-loss was really good, and he had the highest win percentage of anyone on that list. But to me, his craziest stat is that he did not give up a single home run all season. Oh yeah, he also added on three home runs in 1916, because why not? And at the end of the season, Babe Ruth and the Red Sox won another ring. After Babe Ruth was so dominant in 1916, he was still really good in 1917, but he never got back to that level he had been at in 1916. What's worse, 1917 also marked the first full season of Babe Ruth's career where the Red Sox did not make or win the World Series. If 1917 was considered a disappointing season for Babe Ruth, 1918 was even worse, at least as a pitcher. I added that pitcher part because while Babe Ruth Ruth was a little better than average as a pitcher in 1918. In the box during that war shortened year, he was one of the best hitters in the league. He tied for the major league lead in home runs while also being an above average big league pitcher at the same time. Back to his pitching though, walks were becoming a pretty big issue for Babe Ruth and that continued into 1919. Honestly though, I don't think anyone really cared because when the Red Sox fell out of the pennant race, they unleashed Babe Ruth as a hitter full-time. He rewarded them by being the best hitter in all of baseball, and that is not an exaggeration. He led the league in pretty much every major stat, and those 29 home runs was an MLB record at the time. It was time for Babe Ruth to be a full-time hitter. After being so dominant at the plate in 1919, Babe Ruth decided that he wanted to get paid. Red Sox management considered Babe a headache, and their owner needed money to finance Broadway productions, so they sold Ruth to the Yankees for $100,000. This set in motion what we know as the Curse of the Bambino, and the Yankees, they just became arguably the premier franchise in all of sports. Finally, Babe Ruth got his chance to focus on hitting full-time, and right off the bat, he nearly doubled his home run record from the year before. He was so head and shoulders above everybody else that when you see the 1920 home run leaderboard, it looks like a typo. I promise, it's not. And neither is that 255 OPS plus, which remains the fifth highest ever to this day. Other than a dude playing in the first year of the overhand pitch and an ancient Barry Bonds who is on the juice, this is statistically maybe the greatest season by a hitter ever, at least by OPS plus. Behind this monstrous year, the 1920 Yankees won 95 games, coming up just short and finishing third in the AL. But if you have been looking further down than just 1920 on that OPS plus leaderboard, you would see that right below it, we have 1921. That season, he broke his own single season home run record again for a third straight year. 
this is what the single season home run leaderboard looked like at this point. The Babe owned this list. This was also the year where he took the lead in the career home run list passing Roger Connors 138. He would hit 576 more big league home runs and wouldn't get passed for the number one spot in that leaderboard until 1974, over a half century later. I've been talking about home runs a lot in this video though, so let's look at the other stuff. He led in nearly every stat he could, except for average, which he still finished in fourth. He was putting up numbers that still look really good today, but back then were unheard of. Finally, this year it wasn't for nothing, as Babe Ruth led the Yankees to their first World Series in franchise history, although they did lose the nine-game series in eight. Newly named team captain and World Series runner-up Babe Ruth decided to go barnstorming during the offseason between 1922 and 23. The issue with that was that at the time, it was illegal for players who had just played in the World Series to go barnstorming during the offseason, so Babe Ruth got suspended for the beginning of 1922. All in all, it was a pretty disappointing season for the Babe, and the numbers showed it. Still, this was a pretty good down year, and the Yankees were able to make it back to the World Series again. Although this year's series went even worse than the first, as the Yankees only got to play a Game 5 because they tied Game 2 and they got swept. A big reason for this was that Babe Ruth was just bad. He struggled with the curveballs the Giants were throwing him and went just 2 for 17. After the series, one sports writer called the Babe an exploded phenomenon. To his credit, the Babe responded and showed up to 1923 in the best shape of his career. To go along with that, Yankee Stadium had just opened and it was designed just for Babe Ruth. It's safe to say that it worked out pretty well. Babe Ruth got into Yankee Stadium and right away hit for the best average average and on base of his career. He led the league in pretty much everything other than average, including walks, which he had a 170 of. That number was a major league record and has since only been passed by Barry Bonds. He also set the record for times reaching base in a season, which he still holds to this day. Behind him, the Yankees rolled through the AL and advanced to play the Giants in the World Series again for the third straight year. This time, the Babe dominated, hitting three home runs as the Yankees won in six. After hitting nearly 400 and somehow not getting the batting title in 1923, 1924 was the year where Babe Ruth was finally able to get it done. He came just five RBIs away from me finally being able to say that he led in all of these stats. In the end though, it ended up being for nothing, as the Washington Senators beat out the Yankees to win the AL and the Yankees ended up in second. Adding to the disappointment, 1925, the next season, would prove to be the worst season of the Babe's career up to that point. He showed up for the season over weight and then suffer from what became known as the bellyache curve around the world and miss much of the year. Him and the Yankees both struggled badly. In 1926, things were better. Babe Ruth was back to leading in pretty much every stat, and he led the Yankees back to the World Series, although they lost in seven to the Cardinals. If they showed anything, it's that they were ready to be dominant again. 1927. Babe Ruth and the Yankees were all the way back. This team is known as Murderer's Row, and some call it the greatest team ever. And their greatest superstar was Babe Ruth. The stats are just ridiculous. First off, in 1927, Babe Ruth broke his own single season home run record for the fourth and final time. And because it was just what he did, he led in most other stats as well. Around him, the rest of the team was also dominant. Lou Gehrig won the AL MVP that year because players weren't allowed to win the MVP twice at that point. He probably could have given Ruth a run for his money anyway though, because his stats were pretty ridiculous too. At the at the time, those 173 RBIs set an MLB record and he led the league in total bases. For pitching, the 27 Yankees led the AL in ERA by far. This team was just dominant. They won 110 games and swept the World Series, as Babe Ruth added two home runs and another ring. 
From there, Babe Ruth and the 28 Yankees were still pretty dominant. Babe Ruth still led in almost everything, and the Yankees were able to get Babe his sixth ring. After 1928, though, things were never really the same. Don't get me wrong, Babe Ruth was still probably the best hitter in baseball, and it probably wasn't really even close. The problem was, the Yankees didn't make it back to the World Series in any of those years, and the Babe would never make it back to 50 home runs. For what it's worth though, 1932 may have been the best last hurrah he could have possibly asked for. That season, they were back in the World Series again, and they swept the Cubs on the way to Babe's ring number 7. During that series, Babe Ruth had one of the most famous moments in baseball history, the called shot. This moment is a major part of sports war, and to this day, there's still debate about whether he really did call his shot. After that World Series, Babe Ruth's career kind of just faded into the sunset. When he retired, there was no doubt that he was by far the greatest player to ever live, but what about now? To start out, I've narrowed our list down to just four guys. Guys. The first one, of course, is Babe Ruth. After him, we have the guy who passed Babe Ruth on the all-time home run list, Hank Aaron. He gets joined by the guy who passed him, the home run king, Barry Bonds, and another giant, the most well-rounded guy on this list, Willie Mays. If it matters to you, the next guy on my list was Ted Williams, but his counting numbers got hurt too much by missing years with the war, so he got left off. To start off, I'm gonna put up the stats that we've been looking at all video with Babe Ruth, for all of these guys. Everything that's in gold is a major league record, and as you can see, Babe Ruth has a lot of gold there. On the other hand, Barry Bonds and Hank Aaron each have one record for these stats apiece. To make this table a little easier to read, I also had some red and green. Green is the best of these four players, and red is the worst. The numbers in red here are still elite. The players wouldn't be here if they weren't elite. But out of these four, red finishes in last. Babe Babe Ruth's counting stats got hurt a lot by the fact that he wasn't a full-time hitter until he was 25. Still, he isn't even last in home runs or RBIs. Other than those two numbers, Babe Ruth really dominates this list. I mean, let's just take a second and look at how stupidly good that war is. He's ahead of everybody else ever by nearly 20 wins. That's just ridiculous. Most of the other stats on this leaderboard aren't really that close either. For each stat, like home runs or RBIs, that has a pretty close runner-up, there's ones like OPS Plus where there really isn't. On that one, Babe is a full 20% ahead of his runner-up. He's nearly 90 points ahead of the others in slugging and nearly 40 in average. From the stats we have here, I think we can pretty easily say that Babe Ruth is at the top of the list at least in hitting. With the other stuff, I don't think that Babe Ruth is really as bad as you think he is. A lot of those ideas come with his weight, but when you look at stolen bases, he has 123 of them. That puts him ahead of guys like Archie Vaughn and Hunter Pence, who you probably don't think of as fat slow guys. As a fielder, as this paragraph from an article by Bleacher Report states, he was also an average to slightly above average fielder for his career. Now though, I think it's time to pull all these players back up and look at one other category. These are the career pitching stats for each of the guys that I have in my top four. If he'd stayed as a pitcher, Babe Ruth very well may have become a Hall of Famer just for that, while the other guys, they never threw a major league pitch. To me, that's what sealed the deal for Babe Ruth as being the best player of all time. Note how I just said those stats are what made him the best player of all time, not the greatest. So what made him the greatest of all time? To me, the go debate is as much about legacy as it is about numbers. All those guys we talked about have great legacies, but Babe Ruth, he changed the way baseball was played. When he had 59 home runs in 1921, this is what the home run leaderboard looked like. By the time he returned, Tired, the leaderboard looked like this. People were hitting more home runs, and a lot of it was because of the live ball era, but a lot of it was because of Babe Ruth. The only person who really changed the way the game was played like Babe Ruth was Jackie Robinson, and if you watch Jeopardy, I guess somebody out there thinks that that was him too. Okay. Who is Babe Ruth? No, that one wasn't Babe Ruth, but he did change the way the game was played. And to me, he is the GOAT.